got a When You Wish Upon a Death Star collaboration, so let's get cracking! Hello, my explorers, and welcome back to Lawrence Adventures Out There. And if you're new, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. My name is Lauren, and I'm with Castles, Capes, and Clones, where we discuss everything in the Disney universe. We talk Disney, Pixar, Star Wars, The Muppets, 20th Century, um, Hulu, Disney Plus, ABC, National Geographic. The list is endless. But if you enjoy that kind of content, we would love it if you would subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, and do like this post, as it really does help us out. So you, we have got a Wish Upon a Death Star collaboration today. It is hosted by my wonderful friend, Meg. Uh, Meglet is a geek. Um, I'm so excited to be part of this collaboration. Star Wars is something that I have grown up with. Uh, I remember back in 1977, standing in long lines to go see this movie. And I remember that first scene where Darth Vader uh, boards the Tantive Four and talks to Princess Leia. And I just thought, what the heck am I watching? I'm watching this kick-ass woman uh, approach this like terrifying man, uh, something that I had never seen before. It was just awesome. So anyway, it's always been a deep part of my heart. I've watched pretty much any Star Wars things. Let's go ahead and get into this. So the collaboration is pretty much like a lot of the collaborations that we've done. Um, you know, you can do whatever you want. You can make a cocktail, you can show your collections, you can draw a picture, you can um, make a recipe, uh, do ears, whatever you want to do. Uh, for these collaborations. They're just supposed to be these fun collaborations where we don't spend a lot of money. All right, so today I have decided to, uh, last year, the Melix hosted a collaboration in which I showed my um, collection of Asian characters in Star Wars. Today, I'm going to just talk about the history of Asians in Star Wars. Um, just because there are other characters that weren't involved, and I just thought it would be fun to touch upon them. So let's go ahead and get into it. So as I mentioned, growing up, I um, loved Star Wars, but I never saw myself really in Star Wars before. So, let me just show you this scene. There's too many of them. And with that scene, we had our first Asian American in a Star Wars film. While there have been Asians who played aliens and stormtroopers and other characters whose faces are not shown, the only character to specifically look Asian in the first two trilogies was a character named Lieutenant Goreni Talsij, who was played by Alihe Kusuhara. He appeared in the Battle of Endor in Return of the Jedi, piloting a Y-Wing. He screams, there's too many of them, before he gets shot. It's a brief moment but a monumental moment for Asian Star Wars fans everywhere. Really, it wasn't until Disney bought Lucasfilm that we got to see the diversity of the universe bloom. Now, we don't know if it's because of Disney or if it's because society in a whole has become more enlightened, but it's probably a little bit of both. Perhaps the first Asian main character in the Star Wars universe is Sabine Wren from Star Wars Rebels. Sabine is a Mandalorian from House Wren who becomes a part of a ragtag group of rebels. 
Lucasfilm Story Group member Pablo Hidalgo seemingly confirmed that she is of Asian descent. Tia Sakar, Sabine's voice, is of South Asian descent. And in the upcoming Disney Plus show Ahsoka, she is played by Asian American actress Natasha Liu Bordizo. In Star Wars The Force Awakens, we do see a group of Asian marauders called Kanja Club who invade Han Solo's cargo ship. It's not a lot to write home about, still I was excited to see them. While the prequel trilogy did not feature any human members of the Republic, the growing empire certainly were populated by a clone army of Pacific Islanders. Veteran Maori actor Tamara Morrison was chosen to play Django Fett, who would become the template for the clone troopers. Daniel Logan, also of Maori descent, played the young Boba Fett, and Morrison would later return as the older Boba Fett in Disney Plus's The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett. In Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, we are introduced to two amazing characters named Chirok Baze, played by Donnie Yen, and Baze Malbus, played by Jiang Wen. They were the Guardians of the Wills, monks of a religious order that worshipped the Force. While Baze becomes disenchanted from the movement, Chirrut always remains faithful to the idea that he is one with the Force. The two join Jin Erso and Cassian Andor on their mission to infiltrate Scarif and retrieve the information vital to the survival of the Rebellion. They are two of my favorite Star Wars characters, not just because they're Asian, but because they are fantastic characters that I want to know more about. Then, in Star Wars The Last Jedi, we see Rose Tico, played by Kelly Marie Tran, and her sister Paige, played by Veronica Ngo. Sadly, Paige dies in the opening moments of the film as she bought some time during the Resistance escape from Dakar by exploding her ship and taking out a Star Destroyer. A heroic act indeed. Rose goes on to join the Resistance and aids Finn in an unauthorized mission to find a master codebreaker to aid them. Unfortunately, they are deceived and end up in the possession of the First Order until they are rescued by Rey. By Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, Rose had risen in the ranks, almost becoming the right hand to General Leia herself. Kelly Marie Tran gets notable distinction of not only being the first female Asian American leading in the live action Star Wars universe, but the first woman of color. There is a lot to celebrate in that, but sadly she received a great deal of hate from a small but vocal group of so-called Star Wars fans. Whether this played into her diminished role in The Rise of Skywalker, we'll never know, but I thought she was a great character and I would love to see more of her. Also in the sequel trilogy, we should mention Ken Leung, who played Admiral Statura, and Jessica Henwick, who played Resistance pilot Jess Pava. Uh, they both had noticeable, but very small roles. In the animated show Star Wars Resistance, we have Kazuda Kaz Ziono, played by Christopher Sean, who is the hotshot pilot that gets recruited by Poe Dameron into the Resistance. He spends his time spying on the First Order, on the Colossus, and areas around there. Christopher Sean, Kaz's voice, and whose mother is of Japanese descent, acknowledged being the first Asian American lead in Star Wars. I guess that would depend on how you define lead, but Kaz really is the main character of the series, so I get why, why he would say this. Anyway, it's pretty cool that Lucasfilm sought out an Asian American voice for the role. In the comics world, Marvel published a book called Dr. Aphra, 
featuring an Asian woman. Afra is an archaeologist with questionable scruples who finds herself often in the employ of Darth Vader himself. Sci-Fi Wire has described her as a queer woman of color. No matter what, she has quickly become one of the most fascinating characters in the Star Wars universe because she has so many layers. Many would love to see her introduced into the live action world. The book is a great comic and well worth the read. Finally, we are introduced to Fennec Shand, played by the legendary Ming-Na Wen. She first appears in The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. Shand is a mercenary whose bounty is put on her head. The Mandalorian is recruited by a rookie bounty hunter named Toro Calican to help him capture her. But Calican leaves her for dead in the Dune Sea when she convinces him that the Mandalorian would be a better capture for him. While we think she is dead, we learn that she is rescued and given new life by the legendary Boba Fett, to which she becomes his right hand with adventures continuing in the book of Boba Fett. She has also been seen in the animated form as a bounty hunter in The Bad Batch. With Disney Plus coming out with shows like Ahsoka and The Acolyte, which have actually a lot of Asian uh, faces in it, uh, hopefully this is just the beginning of what we are seeing. But I wanted to play homage to the pioneers. Thank you for being part of the Star Wars universe. So anyway, that's a little bit about my peeps. Uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself in learning a little bit more about uh, this kind of sector of the Star Wars universe. Uh, let me know, do you have a favorite Asian Star Wars character of the ones that I mentioned? Who is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. I wanted to thank Meg once again for letting me be part of this collaboration and to check out all the channels below to see what they are doing for this collaboration. If you had a good time today, we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, and do like this post as it really does help us out. Visit us on all of our socials down below and visit our website at www.castlescapesandclones.com. Thank you so much, and we will see you later. Bye!